Kids don't be like me. It's September 12th. I'm gonna try to go deer hunting. We need to be in the water right now because we're at the boat. Yeah, we're gonna take the boat in. Um, gonna hunt real close to the river because, well, we ain't got time to do nothing else. And I'm already down here. I haven't sprayed my clothes with some ether, so I'm doing that. I'm gonna have to wear them dry instead of letting them dry like they're supposed to, but haven't been in a tree this year. Haven't done much of anything. It's been a wild ride. This, uh, a little bit of an off season we've had since turkey season. We've bought a house or almost bought a house. We'll be buying a house, finishing buying a house next week. And already been out of the house that we were. So basically I've been living out of a bag for about the past month and slumming wherever I could slow down. Um, hasn't left a lot of room for deer season preparation, but we're here. You always have to feel your way through those first couple hunts of the season and this one is no exception and maybe a little bit embellished given the circumstances but we now have our camouflage britches on we are fixing to go get in a tree and see how bad disorganized we are so y'all stay tuned and welcome to uh 2023 ungulate editions fifth time I've tried to do this interview because like the first set of the season everything's just out of whack just out of form out of just not just ain't in a routine and it's forgetting stuff not knowing where stuff is new stuff I don't know how to use it's just a disaster um, but that's what we've done so far we're here we're up a tree we got about an hour and a half to go um, we've already seen a couple deer as a matter of fact our bow and camera was still on the ground had a small buck and a doe come right through, actually walked right through this pond that we're watching. Um, we're sitting over the top of a pond. You can probably hear the river over my shoulder, really close to the river. Um, slipped in because it was convenient and um, thankfully because, um, like I said, everything's been a disaster. Uh, I forgot socks, so I'm wearing footies with knee boots. That's very uncomfortable. Um, I got 100 yards from the truck in the boat. I realized I forgot my hunting hat and my leafy suit had to turn around and get it i forgot the spotlight for the boat i have no idea where it is so it's going to be fun getting out of here tonight in the dark uh a connector on the uh, depth finder broke uh it was corroded and just fell apart so we don't have a depth finder so we're going to drag our way out of here in the dark without a light um apparently i took my bow out of the case and put it in the boat didn't screw the stabilizer in so i'm up here with my bow without a stabilizer in it um, I'm using a new quiver this year, and as this little small buck and doe is walking across this pond right here in front of me, I realized that the new quiver doesn't have a loop on it to hang it on my little carabiner, so I have to stuff it down in the backpack. Um, so yeah, just about as, uh, unrehearsed as you would imagine for the first set of 2023, but we're up here. And uh, the reason we're sitting right here is number one, it was convenient. Number two, we got here about two weeks ago and we just ran through in one day and threw cameras up. Been a busy off season. We've relocated Pinotti Project to Georgia, um, back to the old home place. So needless to say, uh, priorities, uh, scouting for deer, getting up cameras, and all of that has not been at the top of the list. So 
we just kind of came through it one day, threw cameras up, was checking persimmon trees more than anything. All the persimmons were super green in this specific spot. There's a pond, and um, there was some grapes on the edge of that pond. And since the persimmons were so green and the grapes were ripe, I figured it might be a good spot. I did notice some tracks on one side of the pond, threw a camera up in the does. Small bucks have been pretty consistent on it. Uh, had a deer that I think may have been a shooter pass by one night, middle of the morning or whatever. And um, so, anyways, we've already seen the small buck and the doe. They walked right across the middle of the pond. Would have been awesome footage, but the camera was with my bow on the ground. So I did get get it up here and get some footage of them. And they hung out for about 45 minutes or so, 30 minutes while I was getting situated. And uh, they fed back up into the woods. So we'll see if anything else comes down for a drink or comes over for a grape. And that's it. Welcome to the first ungulate edition of 2023. I think I got it that time. Do it for tonight. It's dark. I 
I might do it again. It's super dark. I still can hear the deer out there in the water. So I think we ended up seeing five or six. Um, I couldn't tell if that was one. There was another small buck came in late. I couldn't tell if that was the same one from earlier or not. But it was five or six deer, and they're getting into that pond, eating that hot trail or millfall or whatever it is growing out there. I think it's just a trail or some type of plant. But they are uh, eating it. There's some persimmons on the other side. They've been spending some time under as well. So anyways, all things considered, first sit of 23, not terrible. So. Better leave those here. Welcome back to evening number two. We are uh, almost spent too much time adjusting cameras, so we're going to hit another convenient spot. We're right here off the river again. Just going to hop back in. Not the same exact spot, but really close. And just uh, see what we see these last few hours of daylight. Yeah.
I, I, I couldn't tell you if I couldn't tell you nothing. I couldn't tell you if the I couldn't tell you if the arrow even left the bow. That happened. I'm literally I literally I have not cut that camera off from doing the interview maybe a minute. And I look up and I see up the drain where I expected deer to come from, I see a tail flicker. There's been does on this thing consistently. So I'm assuming it's a doe. So I toy with the camera and I go ahead and kind of set the focus out to where I expected to walk out. And through the viewfinder, I see the tines of the deer that I had on camera yesterday. I was like, Phew. and he walked straight out across my opening. And I mean, it was just like I drew the bow and he had already walked past the opening and got to where the leaves were hanging down over him. And I had to squat, kind of like with my legs tensed up. And I've got a daggone pin set for, I, I guessed him at about 35, 36. And when I just ranged it, it was 37 yards, so it was on him. But I shot. I mean, it happened so fast, I drew the bow. And I was trying to, like, make a little bit of noise to make him stop. Because if he took another step, I was done. And I don't even think he ever heard that. But he had his leg back so I tucked it back just a little bit it sounded good but honestly it was like I drew a recurve it was just like like it was just gone I wanted to watch the footage back he bounced off with his tail tucked I couldn't see a spot the arrow could have arrow could have went five foot below him or six foot above him I wouldn't know I was such in a pinch my follow through wasn't good, but he, uh, he bounced off. And I never heard another thing. I never heard him fall. I never heard coughing. I have not heard anything but dead silence. So, I'm gonna just look at the footage. I don't even know if I had him on the camera. I look, I started to go pro, but I looked back and he had spun. Man, that was just wow. Just wow. It's been a little bit weird. I, um, I didn't have a tape. I didn't have a, a lot of time to chat with y'all because those nose came. And as soon as I was uh, trying to get my thoughts together on what had just happened. But anyway. I mean, the deer took two bounces and was, was out of sight, so I couldn't watch him. And I was in such a bind when I shot at him, and it happened so fast. And everything was just wide open as a case knife. I mean, it was just... I mean, I took the camera and just panned around to show y'all like the setup, the B-roll kind of stuff that we do. And literally it was still on when I saw the tail flicker. So it's a, that's all one video clip. Like I just got situated and I just told that camera, we have one lane, one opening between these limbs to kill the deer through if he walks out into that little inlet that we want him to walk out in. Just said that. Guess what I did? Didn't have my crap together to kill him. I'm thinking it's a doe, who wouldn't? And about that time I see the horn, the, the horns come, or antlers come up, and I'm like, shoot, that's him. Grab my bow, by the time I get my bow, get the camera on him, he's done, walked all the way through that lane that I wanted to kill him in, and he stopped, and I had to lean into the tree and squat a little bit to get under the limb. One more step and he was out of there. And you can hear me kind of whistling at him a little bit. I was wanting him to hear just a little bit of something to like get him to, you know, pause. Because if it took one more step, he'd have been out of my life. Actually, what he'd have probably done is just stood around and fed for an hour like him does just did. So my panicness probably was not needed whatsoever. But I did. Like a rookie. But all that being said, I thought I'd shot her. I thought I thought I had. The shot sounded good. It pop. I heard it pop. But 
I'm shooting into a clay bank over there too, so it could have been the bank. So I, I heard the deer bounce off, and it, it all was silent. I didn't hear deer crash, cough, nothing. I mean, just silence. Um, I'm thinking I missed the deer. I went back and reviewed the footage, and the shot looks high and to the right, high to the point where I think I'm shot over him. I'm thinking, crap, I'm sitting there playing the shot back in my head, and I thought a lot of stuff could have went wrong, but shooting high, I didn't think was one of them. So I'm sitting here, and don't have a lot of time to think that through, because these deer start, I hear these deer coming, I think, well, that might be him, because he didn't, he didn't bounce off, he didn't snort and blow, he didn't cause a ruckus, so like, he could have just hopped off. I get everything turned around and squared around and there's these three does and they feed up under me and feed up under me and feed up under me. And one of them gets over sniffing them where the arrow should be. So I get the binos out and the dang deer steps on the arrow. When she does, it raises up so that I can see the veins and they got blood on them. From what I, it looks like blood. So I don't really know what to tell y'all. I don't know. Getting a little dingy dark now. It's been about two hours since we shot the deer. Um, I've already called my buddy Lance with on track because he's bailed me out oh, a handful of years ago up here. So he's the one with Hank, the tracking dog. So um, I'll depend on what we find, what we see when we go check the footage on the big screen, all that stuff. Um, on how, how I'm just trying to give ourselves some options I guess is what I'm saying we've seen I think there's been another seven, eight, nine does come through here munching these, uh, these small ponds man I just I just pay attention like everybody should when you're out here and what you see and reading the sign and this this dry Vegetation. There's not much succulent vegetation for these deer to eat, and uh, picked up on these small ponds and the vegetation that's popping up as that water goes down. And uh, well, it's Mother Nature's food plot. There's no corn. There's no big thyme. There's no deer cocaine. There's no crush pellets. Whatever. There's none of that. What, uh, that's what Mother Nature gave us. That's what them deer are eating. I did not see it all in the video. I don't know. We're going, to, we're going to go check it out on the big screen. Call Lance, my buddy with the dog, who probably knows more about tracking these things than about anybody. Uh, I don't know what of this y'all can see, but I'm about breaking point here get back the laptop is dead so I'm uh, in the back of the truck hooked up to the generator here Last place you can see the arrow is right above that leaf right there and it's dropping down. He's overexposed right there. 
But I'm thinking that right there is the hit. Let's man. All right, by the time I broke it down, it looks to me the arrow is about right up and down. It's not high, but it's back like probably last rib, maybe a rib or two. So almost center mass, bottom third. Gotcha. Um, we should be good. Uh, trying to stay glass half full here. Um, try to make the best out of a bad situation. Um, my gut's turning, thinking that the coach got on the deer or the deer's suffering or etc etc all the stuff that goes through your head after you make the shot and it's not what you wanted but um i don't know we're gonna try to make lemonade out of lemons i guess i'm gonna try to find this thing and i just hope the i got a hoodie on if you can't tell it was cool this morning so i have the best of uh hopes for the meat i think the deer will still be great um i don't have any reason to think he's spoiled um uh, but obviously time will tell on that if we find the deer so Man, I hope Hank is able to bail me out again. So we're gonna meet him down here at the boat ramp and get busy with it. What's happening, my man? There he is. How's it going? Can't complain too much. It'll be a lot better in about an hour, I hope. Did you get any sleep last night? Not a little bit. How's it going, buddy? Good. How are this you? is Alan. Dave Owens. Hey, Alan. Nice Owens. to meet you. Nice to meet you. I could use all the good vibes that you can give right now. <sighs> See the hair sticking up right there. I don't know if he's winning the dude that's out over. He's winning something. Mm -hmm. It might be right here. You go there with Coyote too, oh yeah, I thought he was winning the deer. That'd be a nice change. Mm. I think he's winning this deer. Like I said, let's Coyote cut the trail. Right there's an arrow and he, he ran from there. I can see it on, you can see it on the video. He ran. Got blood. Caught blood and he's pumping out here. Pretty good, honestly. Dark. Like we expected. Let Hank do his thing. Trying to stay out of the way. Did he lose it? Yeah, but it's not, he's not really losing it. It's almost like he, he knows it, like he's landed it and can't figure it out. And he keeps leaving the track just to try to go to it and lose it. found him. <laughs> and then fell back down. I mean, that joker is, how far is he from where I shot him? <laughs> you can see it right there. <sighs> Good boy, Hank. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Y'all reunite. <laughs> you made it easier on us this time. Uh, that, was a, that was a cakewalk for you, I ain't wouldn't it? He's got some time to win. He's going to score better than you think. Because he goes inward. He's got some time on A little velvet on the back. I thought I could see out the video that he was bloody on the back. Pretty dear. Got his ear cut up. You think he died last night? Uh, 
I think he did. Look at his ear. Yeah, I know. All cut up, ain't he? Oh, good boy, honey. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That green grass y'all saw right, right there is where I shot the deer. He ain't. I mean, what is that? Maybe 60 yards from where I shot him, but he just did this little. He went up this little thing and then looped right to here. Mm -hmm. Just one in the morning, number six. <laughs> number six. That's number six for the year. No, do you? Well. Oh. Oh. I know, I know. What's that brow tie curl back like that? He's got some stuff going on, don't he? Yeah. Well, here he is. I've done a terrible job of these post hunt stuff with the deer immediately a little better about it with the turkeys we sit down with those guys but with these guys um it's more just the cleanup process that you get to see but i thought considering the uh, the quickness and the haste of this hunt or i felt like it was it just happened with no i don't know i mean i, I think i made mention of it but man typically me and deer hunting we grind and and uh not that we won't find somewhere else to grind this year but this happened so fast um and here he is. So it's that's the long and the short of it. Um, we can get to the uh, to the elephant in the room, I guess, is the shot placement um, that I was extremely nervous about yesterday evening. As you can see, it's uh, back just about uh, right up and down wise, um, but it's probably six inches behind where I wanted it to be. Um, I'm assuming we just struck straight liver there, and it come out almost identical spot, maybe a touch lower. On the other side so I think we struck straight liver myself um, and that explains the dark red blood that was on the arrow I think liver they usually say four to six hours it may be longer but there was a, uh, a little film on the on the veins of the arrow so we played it safe and no harm was done I mean I can't say that I was nervous all night that this thing was gonna be eat up by coyotes but as, as you can tell no harm done he was laid in the bottom about 60 yards from where I shot him um, he made a funny little move, went up a ridge. Um, we got my buddy Lance with Hank and uh, on track. Came in here to help me this morning just in case it was needed. Um, obviously, he only went 60 yards. I do believe we would have been able to turn this one up by ourselves, but he's a buddy of mine and better safe than sorry, right? Before I got in there and tracked things up, um, one of those situations to where why not, you know? And yeah, that does it for Kentucky. It's, uh, if you didn't suffer through the season last year with me, then uh, it'll make it seem like I'm the luckiest person alive if you got to watch all, you know, two sits of this season. But um, go back it up. You'll see. Back it up to any deer hunting year and you'll see. But uh, <laughs> I'm not going to kick a gift horse in the mouth. So when he walked up on the second sit, um, all lights were green. Everything was on go. So... Big old long tined eight pointer. I mean, big old. It's got to be 11 inch twos, 11 or 12 inch twos, probably a 12 on that side. Big old curled brow tied back here, like a dang turkey spur. I mean, it'll hook. You could hang him on a limb, I guess you could say. Big old hook spur. I bet that's five inch long on that brow tie there. Got this little kicker down here at the base. It's a couple inches long. Um, he's high and tight. Um, probably 14 or 15 inches wide, maybe not real, real wide, but he's got the tine length. Got some velvet hanging here. He's got bloody antlers where he just stripped that off. So he's a uh, got plenty of character. He's plenty cool enough for me. And uh, what can I say? This ungulate made an old turkey hunter smile. Hey, we so. appreciate you guys joining us for this video. If you like this one, you'll probably like the next one. I'll leave it up here in the corner. Don't forget to subscribe and follow along with us. We'll leave our social media links down in the description below. That's also where you'll be able to find links on the turkey calls we use and the apparel we wear and that kind of stuff. So you can find that in that little drop-down description below. And uh, as always, we sure appreciate you guys following along.